Welcome to Mastering in Logic's look at Logic Pro X 10.4.2. Apple have released LPX 10.4.2 with a few new updates that have added great value to Logic's software package. Although it's not a huge update compared to 10.4, it really enhances the usability of the software to make life easier and add some great new functionality, which we'll look at in this video. Alchemy is a great synth, really powerful, sporting a host of synthesis options. The importing process used to be quite a long-winded function to get sound into Alchemy. Let's face it, we all want the convenience of being able to import sound as quickly as possible to get on with the creative process. So Logic has added the Hot Zones feature, which lets you select the sampling and resynthesis options you want straight from the plugin window. This means you can drop your samples straight into the desired synthesis engine, whether that's additive, granular, sample based, and so on. It's great because it means you don't have to leave the expert plugin window other than perhaps to bring up the finder to drag in your sounds and files. For example, I have an EXS patch from the finder. All I have to do is drop it onto whichever synthesis element I want and then from there I can get on with the process of producing and processing sound. The only function you can't use to drag and drop is additive and spectral. For that you'll need to go the old school route of using import sample from the source drop down menu. Another nice tweak to Alchemy is adding numerical data. By double clicking on the dial and typing in the value you want, you can set precise numerical data. This is a small but positive addition because I often found it difficult to dial in the exact value, especially if I was trying to get a dial back to zero without using a key command. Another long awaited and much needed feature is the ability to finally drag automation points so that they align vertically. This has been a long time coming and is a much needed feature. For example, from the main arrange window in automation mode, let's say I have a track and I want the volume to fade very abruptly. In the past, this was difficult to do because as soon as the nodes drag past each other, they cancel each other out or one is cancelled out. Now they snap together when aligned, which is a really handy feature. For everyday automation duties, this is a great new feature and one that will save me a great deal of time trying to align nodes perfectly when automating the mix. This addition is brilliant and I'm really pleased Logic have added the ability to send audio from the sends to the main outputs. A good example of this is if you use outboard gear and want to send audio or MIDI tracks to different pieces of outboard. I have a combination of outboard processors such as EQs and compressors, but I also like to make use of my pedal collection. In the past, reamping was a lengthy process, especially if processing stereo down to mono. But now I can simply send via a send return a mono signal to my outboard gear. For example, here's a bass sample from Apple Loops, and I want to add a bit more grit and analog noise through a distortion pedal. I've set up a send running out of a mono audio channel coming back in on another audio track. This is record enabled, ready to record after it's been processed via the distortion pedal. Here's how it sounds. So once I've set it up and have the right sound, I can simply record the part, turn off the send and then blend it in with the original track. This is a great new feature and again, one that will speed up my workflow when I want to reamp or send signals out to a compressor to say parallel compressor signal or distort something like I've demonstrated here. So now I've recorded my distortion pedal via the new send feature. I want to log the settings on my pedal. I'm going to take advantage of the new addition to Logic Pro X 10.4.2 that allows me to import photos to the track or project notes section so that I can easily recall my settings. The quickest and easiest way to do this is to simply drag your photo into the notes section. In this case, 
I'll choose the track I'm working on and drag it into that track channel notes. Alternatively, if you don't want to add pics of your gear, just add all your friends' selfies. Logic Pro X has added a great new feature that could open up a whole host of new creative and mix options, and that's the new mixer mode, which allows the channel strip, fader, and pan controls to be used to set the level and pan of the send return. When in the mixer window, simply switch on the sends on fader option found at the top of the mixer, and from there, select the various sends that you've set up. Any channel that has the selected send will be active with a gold looking fader. All channels that don't have the send you've selected will simply be deselected and you won't be able to adjust any of the fader levels. All you simply do is raise or lower the level until the send is where you want it to be, just like you used to do with the dial. This is a great feature, but I think it really comes into its own when you add the new independent pan control to the equation. To do this, from the send drop down menu found on the channel strip, select independent pan. When in sends on fader mode, you'll see a pan control appear for the channel strip you're working on. What this does is independently pan the sent signal to the left or right of your bus send, meaning you could effectively have the channel strip panned left and the sends on the fader panned to the right giving you independent panning control over the send. Pretty cool. You could set up simple or even complex stereo sends from different sources and channels. You could pan left or right two or more tracks all running to the same bus, each with its own pan independent from the original track pan. Pretty cool. Let me show you what I mean. In this example, I've set up two sends, a delay and reverb. The delay is where we're gonna focus our panning. It has two tracks running into it, a subtle filtered topper along with a short percussive fill-in. The topper is panned to the right with the sends on fader pan left. The fill-in, however, is panned left on the track channel and right on the send. This wasn't easily doable before, but now I'm able to quickly set up two tracks all panned in multiple directions coming from the same send. This enables you to set up complex and full stereo imaging all with just a few tracks and a few sends. That's a neat feature. There's some other great additions such as the new smart tempo features and regular bug fixes, but I think I'll leave it here and recommend you check out the new updates. And as always, happy mixing and mastering. Thanks for watching.